What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. But totally. we were talking about your. We got into this because we were talking about your family life. Yeah, so my at family home. life. Yeah, so and with your to go back mom's to that. side yeah. and your dad's side. So yeah. you did grow up in a home where, like you said, oh, you're lots coming of love. home to dinner yeah. at five thirty. Yeah. yeah, and your mom, when you're a teenager, starting mm -hmm. to do this shit. Mm -hmm. Like, what did she think you were out doing at night? My mother, I brought home a tag job El Dorado. I remember, yeah. And I, I remember, a tag, I bought a rack. I, back then, there's so many numbers on a car now. But back then, you used to take out the windshield, pop the VIN. There was a tag on the left side of the windshield, just in the very front of the dashboard where the, where the windshield meets the dashboard. And there were two little rivets. And if you got GM, the GM, original GM rivets, you could literally just pop that tag out, put your own tag in, and, and replace the rivets, put the windshield back in, and that's your car. And now if auto crime stopped you back then, they didn't go too crazy. Maybe sometimes they checked the door, but they usually just checked the VIN number or if a traffic cop, auto crime, I shouldn't say, auto crime did a little better job. But if a typical tra cop, traffic cop stopped you at a light, he'd look and he'd say, okay, the VIN matches and you know your uh, registration and everything, it's good and give you a ticket and you leave. So you got away with this. So we were tagging cars left and right. So I bring home an Eldorado Baritz and I remember my mother came on the porch and I, she goes, your father's never stole anything in his life. Oh. And I said, Mom, I didn't either. She goes, please, please, Lois, you're breaking my heart. I said, Mom, I'm fine. I'm not doing it. I'm working at Ciro's shop. Ciro was my friend, who eventually became my co-defendant <laughs> years later. I go, I'm working at Ciro's shop, and he pays me. He gave me an advance. He gave me the call. I'm paying him off. She goes, you're breaking my heart, Lois. Please don't do she this knew. to me. She knew. My, it's a mother, right? It's a mother. So she went inside and she was all choked up. And I said, son of a bitch, I got to park the car around the corner from now on or something. I'm breaking my mother's heart. <laughs> yeah. Forget about taking your family for a ride. Yeah. So, so you know, my, my, my mother knew. And then what happened was, I'm going to tell you what happens. This is, this is how the trajectory of my life went and how I went off the deep end. My mother, who kind of knew, now she's 46 years old. I'm 19 or 18 when she gets sick. Mm. And she 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 goes. We're in. Believe it or not, I'll tell you a crazy story. I'm in Florida with a friend of mine, and his car broke down. So I says, "All right, it was a Trans Am." I go, "All right, let me steal your one. We'll pop your tag. I'll put it on that one and drive home." So we did that. So now he's got a beautiful brand new Trans Am. We're driving home in, and my father. I call home to say, "Hey, Dad, how you doing? I'm coming home. I'm on my way home from Florida." He goes, "Your mother's got a lump," he said, and he goes, "I'm taking her to the doctor." He goes, "You should really get home." I said, what's a lump? He says, a lump. She feels a lump in her back, he said, you know? So I'm taking her in. He says, but get, get home. Get your ass home, will you? I said, all right, Dad, I'm on my way. So my friend drops me off in his tag job. I go home. My mother went. Turned out she had lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And most beautiful woman you ever saw. Absolutely gorgeous. Could run, a, could run a marathon in great shape. And all of a sudden, they gave her a year to live. And she's got lumps the size of cantaloupes growing out of her oh. head within the next few months. Yeah, and she fell apart in front of me, and I took care of her. And I would go, I would literally just like, I was still a criminal, but I would spend so much time with my mother taking care of her, knowing that's it. When she died in my arms, because I didn't want to take her in, I said, I'm not putting her in a home, I'm not putting her in a high, I want, I want her to die with us at home. So we literally kept her to the last minute. I used to, she used to stop breathing, I would roll her over, and she'd catch her breath again, she'd stop breathing again, I'd roll her over. You know, that's how far we went, trying to keep her at the house. The last day she dies in my arms, we just get her to the hospital. We called in. We said, we, my father goes, we have to call Lewis. We got to bring her in. And we did. Uh, but there was nothing they could do for her, obviously. So she dies when we get there. I went off the deep end after that. So if I was, if I was like, if my, if I was criminally minded then, or if I was a little, you know, how to, if I was the kind of guy who would defend myself, then I became the guy who would be violent. In other words, if there was any, she taught me from when I was a kid. There is a God. If me and your dad, or, you know, if me and your father aren't around one day, always remember there's a God above. My mother would teach me that when I was a little kid and my sister. You know, we would sit and kneel down on our beds and pray at night with my mother. I remembered all that. It's weird that my mother would say that, not knowing she would die young. But mm. so anyway, all of those lessons went out the window. I said, if there's a God and he let my beautiful mother, who was the moral compass in my life, the only thing that broke my heart when I saw her saying, oh, Lewis, with the car, please. I said... It's got to be an evil God because she melted to nothing. Mm -hmm. How would God let such a beautiful woman, you know, uh, uh, disintegrate like this in front of my eyes? 
you know, like, and there's animals. The, the wise guys are on the corner who kill people, who shoot people. They're doing mm. fine. The body shop guys who are buying cars from me, they're doing fine. Chopping on a cigar. You know, the, the guys who buy hijacked trucks from me, they're doing fine. They're going to Florida. They got a tan in the winter. They got a, a $30,000 Rolex with a diamond bezel on. Why are they doing okay? Why are they on vacation? Why are they going out to dinner every night? And my mother melted away in a bed. If there is a God, he can't be a good one. That was my feelings at the time. Obviously, that changed later on in prison. I reevaluated things. I looked deeper into things. I studied philosophy, history, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get into that if you want. But at this point, I said, if there's a God, it's not a good God. And I went off the deep end. Now, if you want to hurt somebody, send me. Mm. Send me. Julian owes us 100000 He ain't paying. I'll go get it. It's the villain villain origin story. Oh man, so to speak. I was off the tr I was off the charts like that, you know. And I, you know, I started, you know, getting a little bit of a trigger finger. You know, my my trigger finger started itching a little. You know, I wanted to. I didn't care anymore. So how'd your dad take it? My father was a mess. My father. This was the love of his life. This is the I used to go. I used to bring my father the year after she within the the first year after she died. I bring my father, like I said, Dad. I'd open the room and he'd be laying in bed with his arm around the pillow. You know, he was a broken man. And I'd say, Dad, did you eat today? What? What? I said, did you eat today, Dad? And I'd go out and I'd get him something to eat. Um, you know, maybe I'd cook uh, spaghetti aglioli, bring it up and leave it on his, on, on his dresser. And, and then I'd go back there. Two hours later, it was still sitting there. I thought he, you know, my father was done. So I had no supervision. I mean, that's like when I was running all over the United States, too. If you gave me a tip... They got, they got surveillance photos of me knocking off. I was planning an armored car heist, actually. We went out to California to knock off a Loomis armored car. And the FBI, thank God, grabbed us like the day before we were, we were planning to make the move, you know, to jump. But we still had guns in the room. We had duct tape. We had two-way radios. We had walkie-talkies. You know, we had the makings of, you know, everything ready. We're going. And, and the FBI grabbed us in California. But... I'd just take a trip to California if you gave me a tip. I'm going, you know, get on a plane. Back then, before like 9-11, I'd go to a girl, book me a ticket, uh, put down uh, Joe Russo. You know, <laughs> you can't do that now. You know, you can't do I get on a plane, I'm Joe Russo. You know, like, so uh. you can't do those. Back then, you could do that stuff. No more. Our Discord and Patreon links are in the description. We are starting to do AMAs on Discord. And we are also now releasing a new show called The Julian and Alessi Show with my producer, Alessi Aleman, on Patreon, along with some other exclusive content from episodes that we have been putting out on YouTube that are not seen on YouTube. What yeah. was What was like a prime... That, I mean, that gets complicated mm. when you start talking about mm. going out of state just mm. to go do something. But when you were first, mm. after you did your first truck at like 17 and mm. it started to become a thing doing the truck, what was, how would you decide what job to do, what truck to target, where to target it, mm. and how many guys you needed? Yeah, so the first, the first thing is the best thing. The best thing is a tip. You come to me and you say, look, I work for such and such a company. And, uh, you know, the truck leaves every morning at 8 o'clock. And this is where it's going. Or you're a driver. You could come to me and you say, there's a million reasons why people give tips. Maybe your wife's a spendthrift. Maybe you're a gambler. You know, you're always at the racetrack every free moment mm -hmm. you got. You're at Aqueduct or Belmont or, or, or you know, one of, one of the tracks. And you're, you're always in debt, maybe. And you come to me and you say, look, I'm working for this company. I drive this truck or that truck out of this place. And this is what I carry. Those are the easiest ones. You're going to give me the truck. How easy is that? The next step is... Maybe you route oh, the truck. Oh, that's like when they just walk out of the up. truck. Doop, 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 doop. Yeah, it's a give up. How you doing, boys? Yeah, yeah the guy, yeah, yeah. you know, so well, I've had guys ask, tell me, give me a good crack. You know, they, now, they, they don't want to go for a lie detector and they want to be able to tell the cop with a straight face, look, I got a hit. What, so, what, what's, what's the commission on that? 10, 20%? 10 percent usually, 10%. Okay. You know, we, ha we, had, we had a few incidents where a guy wanted more, you know, after the fact, after we agreed to the yeah. 10, and it ends up going to a sit down. He goes and digs up a great uncle who's a wise guy, and the wise guy wants to talk to me. And I say, look, the, this is really, really did happen, actually. Yeah. Ro Ronnie One Arm, if you ever heard of Ronnie One Arm, he was a no. great guy. He's been away for life. Ronnie <laughs> One Arm was a good guy. I get a phone call. They, Ronnie One Arm wants to see me. Ronnie One Arm told Pete Gotti, so oh, like the brother. Pete, John Gotti's brother, Pete. I yeah. was in and out of Pete's house every day for about six, seven years. Pete's we'll son was my that. friend, yeah. And I was close with Pete the father because Pete saw me there every day. And uh, so they called Pete Gotti and they said, uh, Ronnie One Arm wants to see Louie. So I go there, Ronnie One Arm, I got to tell you, was, was, a, was a diplomat, diplomatic guy. 
and I told him the story. It was a guy who gave, gave us a truck. Oh, actually, no, this wasn't a, a thing over the commission. We hijacked the truck. The truck was being stored in a friend of mine's yard, and the yard got raided, so we lost the truck. Mm. And the tip to the, the tipster goes, I want my 10%. And we said, we lost the truck 10 minutes later. We don't have your money. What are we going to do? We never got paid. So, you know, I mean, look. At Not go, my problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a, it could, it's a coin flip. It could go either way. Yeah. But Ronnie one arm was def ended up defending the guy. And he called me down there. And I said, look, he, go, we took, he goes, we'll take a walk around the block. So I took a walk around the block with him. I explained to him what happened. I said, look, Ronnie, I'm not trying to hustle the guy. This is what happened. Maybe the guy gives us another tip. We'll take another truck, whatever. I'll make it up to him. I'll give him 20% next time. Whatever the case is. I don't remember exactly how I said it. But Ronnie said, it's done. Don't worry about it. Yeah, he squashed the beef and ruled in my favor. So, yeah. I mean, look, I lost the truck. I don't, you know, I, yeah, I mean, I shouldn't have to dig into my pocket, but somebody could have technically said, you still have to. He right. gave you the truck. Whatever the case is, I won the beef. And sometimes but, uh, these guys, though, if they gave you the truck, they make you hit them to make it look I've good. had guys, I, I never wanted to hit somebody I knew, but I've had guys say, G you know, give you me a shot. Him. So I would call one of my, what got, ended up being, you know, a guy in my crew. Maybe some of them ended up being my co-defendants later. But I would call a guy in my crew and I'd turn my back. I'd say, give him a crack. <laughs> yeah. Remember that scene in The Sopranos yeah. where he's like, all right, Mikey, give him a yeah. whack. And he's like, yeah, 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 right here. And then he yeah. goes, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, yeah. stop. And yeah. he keeps going. He's yeah. like fucking kicking yeah. the guy. He's no, like, we, we never did that. Crack. Yeah, we never did that. But so, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes we tied the guy up to make it look good. You know, oh, there you go. We did all of that. Now, that's now, did you like zip ties or rope? There's usually zip ties. Zip ties like were the easiest ties. things yeah. in the world. Yeah, yeah they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's funny when I ended up with zip ties from the FBI one day, you know, right? So, yeah, yeah. But no. Oh, they zip ties? No, yeah. no, no. But, yeah. Uh, I had zip ties on me for once. Yeah. I don't remember exactly who it was, Secret Service or FBI. Somebody zip tied me once. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But um, whatever. Federal government's getting a little yeah. light in the pocket Oh, over they do. There, if, they, if they do a big raid with a lot of guys, they use zip ties, the FBI. I'm almost positive. Oh, oh, actually, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't thinking like a raid like that. Yeah, no, if they got to put people. Yeah. yeah, I was so, thinking like a regular arrest. I'm like, no, Damn, regular arrest. They, they march you out of your he your house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had that too. So, but uh, so so the, the you know, I mean, that's it. The, the next best thing is if a guy gives you and he tells you, look, I route the trucks or I'm in the place, and this is the tip. That's the next best. But you got to take the guy on your own, though. You know, there there was like, you know, how many guys would you need for that? Believe it or not, I could jump on the truck myself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you jump on it. You got a gun, right? You got a gun. You tell the guy, listen, one time a guy, I, tell, I, I was telling my friend recently, there was a battery truck. We took this on the fly. It was, a, it was a truck full of car batteries. And the guy panicked. And he drove the thing into the wall of a cemetery. And I just got out and said, I'm out of here. What the fuck am I going to do? I can't get this truck out, you know, now. So, you know, so shit happens. But for the most part, if you... If you bring a big gun and you put the you know fear into somebody, they usually comply. And then the first thing we would do is say to the guy, and again, I regret this now. I want your, vis your viewers and listeners to know, I have gone through the years of regret. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the other side now of that. I could speak about it more lightly. I believe you. Yeah, we, I promise you I did. Yeah, I yeah. promise you I did. I Thank you. you. Thank you. So, you, you know, I mean, uh, if you use a gun, you put the fear guy, you know, fear into the guy. I don't want to say the fear of God. I don't want to use God's name in this. But if you put fear in the guy, the next thing you do, once you got him subdued, the first thing we would do is say, listen, you're going to be with your wife tonight for dinner. You, you're married. You got kids. I promise you, we don't want to hurt you. Are you All wearing we a mask ever? I did a lot without a mask on, yeah. um, which was a little wild. You know, one time I was hitting these trucks. Somebody gave me a tip. I was a kid and they gave me a tip on these uh, lawn. The guys, they used to have these little vans with a drop box in the side and you would pull down the drop box in the side of the van and put a big bag of coins in there and drop it into this big, big tank in the and that's locked inside the truck. A friend of mine gave me the tip. He worked for the company. They, they emptied the industrial size laundromat machines in buildings all over Manhattan, the Bronx, everywhere. And at the end of the day, these little trucks with coins would add up to 15, 20 grand in quarters. Mm -hmm. So I hit one. It's easy. I tell the guy, get out drive the truck away. I hit another one. My co-defendant eventually becomes my co-defendant. He hits one. It got to the point where we would just like pull up at a light and I go, there's a gun under my seat. I'll pick you up around the block. Go get the truck. You know, like, and he get out. One of my co-defendants did that once. He got out, jumped in with the guy, followed him. I followed him onto the LIE. He got off on the LIE. The, I saw the driver get out, kiss the ground, and my co-defendant drove away and I followed him. We took the truck. But we were doing them so often that the guy who, who worked in the place, he goes... Hey, Lou, I, I 
think you got to stop hitting the trucks. Yeah. So I didn't, I go, look, maybe they're not all us. We hit a couple, but maybe somebody else is hitting them too. He goes, no, no, it's you. He goes, they got a picture, a, a sketch that looks identical to you in the building. So I said, okay, I'm done. I better stop. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, they got, somebody did a sketch of me. How many yeah. of these do you think you did in your life? Paul, Paul. Oh, trucks yeah, yeah. overall? Trucks. Dozens. Dozens. Yeah. Dozens. It was a daily, you know, it was a regular thing. I'm doing and, and heist. I should say heist too. If you told me there's a business with a safe in it, payrolls, you know, payrolls eighty five thousand. Could payrolls. you crack a safe yourself? Oh, uh, it's funny because we had we had. I can't. No, but I you had, had a guy. I had a safe cracker once. One yeah, day yeah. I called the safe crack. He was famous for safe crack, and I got a big safe. Called the guy up. He was Vinny the safe cracker or Gene Otis, whatever Sounds the fuck right. his name. Yeah. Comes over. And he takes out a sledgehammer, blowtorch. I go, what the fuck? I was picturing it. I thought it was going to slide gloves yeah, on. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like Yeah, that. like this, put his ear to the thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I got to see firsthand what a yeah. safe's made of. It's concrete with like this rebar inside, mm -hmm. netting. And then, you know, obviously we got into it. And <laughs> when you're opening a safe, there were some, some tips are good where we got something. Some tips, we opened it up one time. All that was in there was the receipt for the safe. Ooh. Yeah. So that was a letdown. Yeah. So, you know, it depends. Thank you for watching in the video guys please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below